Hey everyone, this is Fiona. And in this video, I want to talk about music theory. So is it important to know your music theory? Um, when we think about music theory, we're talking about, you know, notation, we're talking about anything that pertains to the grammar of music. So yeah, key signatures, the form, um, chord progressions, harmony, how to construct a melody, all that stuff, textures, uh, rhythms. So short answer, I do think it's important. I think that it gives us a way to communicate about the music that we wouldn't normally have to communicate with music because music is all about sound. And so if we say like, hey, we're gonna go from the one chord to the four chord to the five chord, um, you know, we could just play those chords or, you know, we could just play it or we could communicate it, you know, the two chord, the, five, the four chord means this, the five chord means these notes in this key. So, you know, knowing, being able to communicate about the music is going to be really important. And a lot of people put a lot of stress on music theory. They think that, you know, it helps you to, if you learn the rules of music, then you're better able to break them. And some people think, oh, you know, music theory is just gonna hurt your creativity. You're basically going to, um, you know, it's gonna make it so that you you have to follow all these rules. And I don't think that's true. I think that all the great composers have studied music theory to an extent. I think that they've done the work to the point where they don't need to consciously think about it. Just like when, they're, when we are constructing a sentence, when I'm talking right now, do I have to think about every single word that I'm going to say before I actually say it? Or does it just kind of naturally happen? So same thing happens in music. I think that when you've put in the work, the music theory, you're aware of what your possibilities are. If you're like in this scale, what notes are available to you? How do you modulate to a different key? If you're doing this chord progression, you know, what are the different possibilities? How would you modulate? How would you, if you wanted to improvise on top of this, like when you're aware of all the different possibilities, it takes out the guesswork. So you don't have to just rely on your ear. Now, here's one thing, though, I've had a teacher say that, you know, to definitely always use your ear first when you're writing music, always use your ear, and then theory comes second, you know, because you don't want to lose your, your voice as a composer, as an improviser, you want to have that always be, you know, the most uh, intuitive part of you come out first, and then the theory part can come out, you know. But I think that I do, as a composer, I do use music theory quite often. And, you know, not only in notating my music, but also in being able to develop it. So if I have a piece of music and I feel like I'm stuck at a certain point, well, I can dissect what are the possibilities that I could do with this melody? You know, how can I develop it further? Um, what kinds of techniques can I use to kind of make it more interesting? How can I change the texture? And I think before, you know, if I'm just using my ear, I'm going to have to guess and kind of play around with a lot of different sounds rather than, oh, at this point I could do kind of like a hocketing thing, or I can kind of do an isorhythm thing going on here. Um, or maybe this part of the music, the range needs to kind of expand more, or maybe I'm too much in the high range and I need to kind of bring the left hand part, if I'm working on a solo piano piece, I need to bring the left hand part down to the bass again, because it's like the tension's all up here in this high range. And then how can I sustain that level of tension um, without losing momentum? So I definitely think music theory is important to know. I think that it can help you communicate um, what, what you're trying to do with other, not only other musicians, but it can also help you be able to know what you're doing and be very conscious about what you're doing musically. And uh, sometimes what, before I really kind of thought about music theory in, in composing, I would a lot of the times do the same thing over and over again without really realizing it. And that was just a pattern. I would just kind of go using the same chord progressions, the same type of techniques and a lot of my music sounded very similar to itself because I was doing the same thing over and over again. So it wasn't until, you know, I learned, cause it's like, you don't know what you don't know. So once I started kind of branching out of the box that I was in, I was able to kind of change the sound of my music. 
also as a performer, you know, when I started learning more about form, it helped me learn pieces better. So before I learned about what a fugue was, a fugue just sounded like uh, a jumble of notes and every once in a while I could pick out a melody line and, but it always was very difficult to listen to. And it wasn't until I learned how a fugue was uh, created that I really started appreciating, oh, you have the subject, you have the counter subject, you have the answer. And it's a very contrapuntal uh, music form. So you're, you're supposed to hear different multiple lines of music going on at once. And can your ear hear those different lines of music going on? Or does it sound like a big jumble, uh, a mess of notes and harmonies? So I think it actually, when you understand how a piece is created, it can really help you learn the piece faster and understand, oh, here's the first theme, here's the principal theme, here's the secondary theme. Oh, in this section, we start on, you know, the tonic. And in this section, we start on the dominant. And so it kind of paves the way for you to kind of be like, it, it helps you predict what's going to happen. And it becomes less of a, oh my gosh, this is, you know, uh, you're discovering new territory. It's like a sonata form is a very, uh, it's a tonal form. So it's like, you kind of, it takes all the guesswork out of what's going to happen. And I do think, I mean, people can appreciate music without knowing any music theory. I think that's definitely possible. When you start to apply music theory to music that you're listening to, you're gonna be able to pick out how they compose their music and, oh, that melody, you know, it's interesting that they developed it this way or use this chord progression or this type of textural development or these types of rhythms. So it's almost like it kind of makes you appreciate the music in a different way. So it's like a cinematographer looking at a film from a production standpoint. Um, I think it, it helps. It, it makes you appreciate the hard work that was put into the music. So, um, yeah, I think that music theory is important. I think that uh, when I improvise at the piano, and I'm myself, I am no expert at music theory. I will, uh, the whole reason of doing the music theory Mondays kind of themed uh, YouTube video thing is, is to basically help me be a better teacher at music theory. Because even in college, I wasn't that great at music theory and I didn't really take it that seriously. It wasn't that important to me. And I feel like it's, it was kind of hindering, hindering, you know, what I could do as a composer and also as a performer. So, um, you know, my first piano teacher really stressed music theory. It was, uh, we did the um, Robert Pace books, which are ancient, and I don't think they're really around anymore, but his courses are so dry and it's very music theory based. So, I mean, going through all that stuff did help kind of create a good foundation, but like as a performer, because I started off as a pianist before I became a composer, I was actually like, why do I need to know this? I just want to play the sounds. I just want to regurgitate what's on the page, but it actually helps you be a better sight reader. It helps you understand, have a deeper understanding of the music. So if I know I'm, um, I have this invention I have to learn or this piece of music, I kind of know what to expect what keys are likely that this piece will modulate to? Um, and uh, yeah, it just gives you, it, it lays out everything so that there's no guesswork anymore. And even the ear training stuff that most people think is like not important, actually being able to look at a piece of music and hearing it in your head before you actually play it is really important. I think it's, you know, if we can hear in our heads what we want to write, write down as composers or improvisers, I think that's really powerful. Otherwise, it's just going to be, we have to figure it out. We have to use our ear and that's going to take longer. Even playing with other people. So I played in bands with people who didn't know anything about music. I mean, they didn't even know the notes that they were playing. And so it was just like completely relying on the ear. Okay, this sound, is this the right sound? And it just took, it just took a lot longer than to communicate with someone like that than um, someone who was like, oh, we're gonna go, we're gonna play this chord progression and then go to this note and then this type of texture and this type of rhythm. So, I mean, it's definitely possible with Telepathic Birds, uh, the synth pop band that I started 
uh, with my bandmate, like he didn't know any music theory and, you know, we're still able to create really good music. So it's not that you will be completely unable to play music. Just learning your music theory helps you learn the nuts and bolts of music so that um, it's easier, easier to understand. I think that uh, I, I like to compare it to like, you know, the way we talk. Do we have to think about every single word and the spelling of a word or no, we just talk. We, we've already put in all the work, so it's, it's a lot easier. So anyways, thanks for watching.